Oh, buddy. You got one. You know what I see? I see catfish, that's Ryan. catfish bait right there, boys and girls. If that's all we got, we're gonna be good. Oh, yeah. Feel that? Super soft. Be perfect catfish bait. So we're out here and it is absolutely just uh, windy. Windy as can be. Chris is just throwing the net, basically just blindly right now because there's a bunch of birds working this area. And this is exactly where we were the other day where we got the Pogi, the Manhattan to do the catch and cook. Today, since it's windy, Chris said you want to come up and try to get a, a sail cat because we haven't done a catch and cook with one of those. So we're out here and uh, we're just trying to net some pogies right now, take them to the inlet and try to see if we can get some catfish and or redfish and snook. Ah la la, I think we're done bait fishing. Look at that. It's a nice haul. Got them good, boys. Got them good. Oh, yeah, baby. Brother. Hell yeah. It's really tough to see in the wind because usually we look for them flickering on top and Bro, there's no seeing out roll. here right now. You know what I love when a plan comes together? Chris says, you want to come up here and catch a catfish? First bait down. What do we got, boys? We got That's us a Larry. We got the Larry. That's the Larry legend that we wanted. About a four pound Larry right there. Wow. Whoa. I got my bait back too. You're just winning all sorts of ways today. So this right here, I'm gonna pick him up in a second for you guys, but this is a <laughs> sail cat, not a hard head. These get a lot bigger than hard heads and people, people usually don't keep hard heads, but they will keep this guy right here. What's the chances of getting my hook back? Uh, your chances of getting your hook back are pretty slim to none, but it doesn't matter because this kitty cat is going home. That was my favorite Jayhawk though. Bro, look at this guy. He's got some net. Those spines light up your day. So this right here is the target species. Gaff top sail, gaff top uh, catfish, sail cat, whatever you want to call it. Good amount of meat on them. Also known as a Larry. Chris calls them Larrys. They got big mouths. Look at him. It's a big guy. We got like the ideal catfish conditions. Hurricane, dirty water, windy. About pretty much probably the only thing we're gonna catch today is catfish, but. Took me I'm about what, complain. 30 seconds to hook up? Literally, <laughs> Mick is on two, doubled up, boys. Mick. Doubled on, oh no, I Mick mine lost it. it. I blew it. <laughs> I blew it for the boys. Big Look Larry. At that. Larry. Look man. at this. Sail cat. Victor already went over like the whole like, you know, deal with these guys, but Victor's gonna cook them up. So if for whatever reason you guys are watching my video and you guys do not watch Victor's videos, be sure to slide over to Land Shark Fishing because he, you know, he's really just what I wanna be in life, but uh, maybe we'll get there one day. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was quite the honor, thanks Ryan. <laughs> Don't forget Ryan, to your charter with plug, your, charter. plug your channel real quick. Yeah, my channel is Juno Ryan, J-U-N-O-R-Y-A-N. Do a lot of fishing, um, and I'm just not as consistent right now, but trust me, boys, in the future, we're gonna get there. And he served his country for the last three years. He's got one year left as a Marine, so that's always a plus, right? Absolutely. So this is what our game plan was today. Chris netted those pogies earlier in the morning, and then we got out here when it was outgoing tide. It's incoming now. We're just anchored up in the main channel of Sebastian Inlet cutting up pokey chunks like this, circle hooks, 40 pound leader, just a little bit of lead, and you know there's stuff always swimming by so you don't know what's gonna eat it. Like, we caught two giant bonnethead sharks today that I was not expecting. Let one go, kept one, um, but Chris has caught a ton of redfish doing this, snook. We haven't gotten those yet, just the catfish and jacks, but um, there's not much to do when it's blowing like a hurricane out. You can't fish offshore, you can't really do much inshore. We might try to catch some trout later, but uh, what we're doing today. Does he have teeth? Oh, dude, he does have a little, like, bit, little of bit of teeth. He's got like sandpaper right here, so that's what they'll use to grab onto their baits and hold onto it. And you feel them when they eat, they kind of like, they pick it up and they like munch munch on it. And you'll try to set the hook and you pull it right out of their mouth. You kind of got to let them eat for a while because I think they just like to feel it around. They're, you know, they're, they're scavengers. Clumsy. Sometimes they might eat things that actually aren't food. You know, sharks do the same thing. So they'll mouth it and then they'll get, get in and grab it. Look at that big old thing. We actually yeah. kind of broke his top fin, but he'll eat just fine. People eat them all the time, right, Victor? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, you can lip, lip them like a bass. You definitely want to avoid the spines so they Chris have... Chris is on. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Cat. Catfish. So Cat you, you want to avoid... Okay, so here's the difference right here. That right there 
is a hardhead catfish. These, those do not get as big as these sail cats. They smaller also, mouths. smaller mouths, smaller spines, they got kind of little nubs. I think you're more likely to get stuck by one of these than that. Because those have those longer, yep. like these things, yep. which I think will protect it more. This is just straight spine. But on any catfish, well at least the saltwater ones, you want to avoid you that right there. Yeah, I got you. The pectoral fins, they got spines, and then the top fin. Um, I mean, they're not going to kill you, but it stings, unless, you have a, unless you have a bad reaction, it's just supposed to sting really bad. I've never been stung, have you? Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel good, does it? Mm-hmm. I've stepped on them before. Oh, that's not good. So we're going to let that guy go because these have much more meat on them. That's not a catfish, I'll tell you that. Catfish. It's either a shark or a shark or red or something. It's like the boys and us was saying, you don't know what you're going to catch out here. Fish and pokey chunks on bottom. We got the massive inlet right behind us. And when the water is gray like this, I feel like you see a lot of stuff and catch a lot of stuff that you don't normally see. So we've caught jacks, we've caught sharks, we've caught kitty cats. I think if we do this long enough, we might catch a redfish or a snook. What flavor is it today? Doing the jack tail beast. Yeah. Fish bite so much harder in current. Isn't it crazy? Whoa! Big old jackfish, hold that bad boy up. Hard fighting fish. And Chris sells them, but he's not selling them today. Chris just caught an absolute unit of a catfish. Look at this thing. Big strong. And we're cutting the tail off to bleed him out. Jeez. Slippery Yeah, it, it, they are very slippery. Yep, see? You cut the tail off and he's gonna bleed himself out. Watch this. This is the biggest one we've caught of the day. That thing is... You guys ready for the kitty cat filet? Gaff top sail cat. We've probably said it 10,000 times, but check that thing out. He's got all these little protrusions. I don't know, I think these are called like, not barbell, they're something with a B. I always right? call them whiskers, I don't know. Whiskers. I think they have really bad eyesight and they use a lot of uh, smell what I've been told with catfish. So, just like with any fish, just get on that spine. You're gonna see your knife, when you get to about this point, it doesn't wanna go anymore, and that's because that rib cage is stopping you. And one thing I like about uh, when you fillet catfish, get yourself a nice flexible knife. This is an eight inch Dexter, and it really contours to the body of the catfish. Which you guys are gonna see is gonna become very important later on. And you guys can actually save 20% off Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark. So this catfish, kitty cat, is full of worms, actually. So now, the reason I can't do anything else, this, you hear that? That is a rib cage. So what we do is go right there on top of it. And we're gonna finish out our fillet by just gliding on top of that rib cage. And I know that hardcore catfish guys at home are probably cringing and saying, dude, you're doing it wrong. Well, guess what? We don't catch a whole lot of catfish. And these are not freshwater cats. They're not that big. I mean, the filet looks great. It's white as can be. There are some worms. Doesn't scare me. It's scaring Chris a little bit, but. Just pick them out. Yeah, that's it, man. You pick them out. They're okay, gonna so cook right out. That's the biggest thing. That's it. So, the other side of the catfish, I'm not going to show because it's the same thing. But the cool thing about these fish that a lot of people don't know is they have a considerable, considerate, considerable, considerable amount of belly meat. So basically you just kind of feel around with your knife to anything that's soft. So if your knife allows you to go there, send it with your knife. Okay, so watch this. That's all belly meat. It's not as big as the other one we just filleted, but um, this is your belly section. This is what I like to do. The inside of it, so the cavity side, it's got, if you've ever had silver skin on ribs, it's kind of like that. You just peel it right off. Just like a lining of fat. Just like a is. lining of fat. Take your knife from the inside out and just get it away from the belly. You got yourself a little catfish nugget. Same thing on this side. 
That's why that flexible knife is important because it doesn't tear through the skin. Catfish nugget number two. Always go from the tail side to the head side. And I like to leave a tiny bit of meat on the skin, as you guys will see why in a second. Flip it over, you see how rough that is? They got, even after this catfish was blood, this catfish had no tail because we blood it. Look at that bloodline. It's freaking, it's fierce. And it's very fibrous here as well. So we leave a little bit of that on. Got yourself a nice catfish filet. The nice thing about catfish is they don't have any pen bones. Oh, I didn't know that. At least this one does. And I think it has to do with the way that this muscle inserts into the rib cage. But look at that. That's it, man. We're having catfish for dinner. Oh, how cool wow. is that? Dude, this guy's full of crabs. What is that thing? Cool. Is it? Yeah. This guy was. I know that catfish eat crabs, huh? That's it. A lot of people think catfish are slow. They're not slow. They can catch stuff in the wild for sure. They're not just scavengers. There's not dead random pieces of bait floating around the bottom in the wild. So we'll catch you guys in the kitchen. All right, so we're doing a real southern fried meal tonight. And uh, ladies, our boy Chris Lowe is single and needs some desperate help. You guys gotta come check out this fridge right here. Look at this. I've been waiting to say this all week. We got beer. All the actual food we just bought. Don't don't let him fool you. He's got four cases of barbecue sauce for some reason. I have no idea why, but he does. So, uh, ladies, Sebastian, ladies, if you're single, slide into Chris Lowe's DMs because he's in desperate need of a woman's touch in this house. I'm not gonna deny it. <laughs> All right. So the boys and I are gonna have a good old Southern meal. Austin, you brought this over to my house for the black tip catch and cook and it's just been sitting in my pantry and I said, you know what? It's the perfect excuse to make some uh, lemon pepper catfish. So we got a little uh, dredge going on there. I had our catfish soaking in just milk. It, um, it removes kind of the, kind of like any gamey flavor that would have been left over or any of the blood and um, the fat just adds a nice touch and flavor. And it also helps bind whatever you know, flour or bread mixture you're gonna use, so. We just had some catfish soaking in some milk. We let it drip off. A little cast iron pan, peanut oil, fried time. I don't know about you guys, when I think of catfish, I think fried catfish. It's got like the perfect texture for it. It's very firm. It's got a nice texture, I like it. It might not be as good as freshwater catfish, but there's certainly nothing bad about it. Look at how good these look. Get that crispy, man. man. Southern fried catfish never looks so good. You can't even see the worms. That's the best part. You cover them in breadcrumbs, you can't see them. To keep the southern tradition going, lima beans, red bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, onion. We're gonna do a little succotash. Um, we have, this is, okay, so we cooked some bacon down, like half a pound of bacon. Got it nice and crispy. Left the bacon grease in there because that's how you get flavor, you know. Now we're gonna put all this in there. Animal fat is the best fat. Not processed and it just has flavor. That's one whole onion, right? One whole onion, one red bell pepper, one yellow bell pepper. So these were frozen lima beans that we just cooked real quickly and strained. Add some grape tomatoes. So, I mean, we're, we just want to just break down the tomatoes a little bit, let them release their juice. You still want them to be kind of firm. But our onions, peppers, pretty much done. Catfish, pretty much done. Creamy style of corn. It gives it a really good texture, real good creaminess, so it doesn't dry up on us. We're basically just heating this through because it's canned corn, you know, you don't need to cook it. Lima beans going in. Basically just gonna heat those back through. Go ahead, dude. Spice it up. We're good to go. We got our catfish nuggets. We got our succotash. I'm real happy with it. I mean, everything's pretty firm. And then um, on everyone's plate, we're just gonna top it off with a little bacon 
We got some mac and cheese in the oven, and it doesn't get better than that. Every Don't bite. expect anything. <laughs> All right, look at this. Snuck attack. <laughs> Presentation wasn't uh, too good this time, but you know what? You're in It'll Sebastian, do. it's okay. <laughs> this ain't, this ain't all when enough. is Sebastian? You can put some elevator. That looks like delicious. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. You made mine, I don't want my food. Oh, hold on, I don't want my food touching. <laughs> You're one of those guys, huh? You gotta put your bacon on top of your succotash, man. I think the sail cat is highly underrated. Um, it was definitely more difficult to clean than a lot of fish. So, you know, and Chris is making fun of me off camera. It's really distracting right now, guys, but I'm just gonna keep going with what I was thinking. They're definitely a pain to clean, and for as big a fish you get, or as big of a fish as it is, you don't get a lot of yield. There's definitely like a little bit of meat on them compared to other fish. But overall, tasted amazing. Great fried fish recipe, and just, it was an awesome meal. Victor did a great job. Thanks, bro. You got it. Good job, man. I yeah. don't know if I could top that. You definitely can. <laughs> Uh, sail cat. <laughs> I would choose a blue runner over sail cat. That's just my preference. But if you're hungry, they're very easy to catch and you can load up on them fast. Um, I think we caught what five in no time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could load up quick and it'll fill you up. Honestly, when I came here, I was thinking, I'm like, hey man, you want to come over and cook some sail cats with us? I'm like, yeah, why not? As I'm driving, I'm like, this is probably gonna be a circus. It's just gonna be bad sail cats and like no sides. So I was like, hey, should I get something to eat real quick before I uh, stop over? They're like, no, nah, come on, man. When I show up, I forget, you know, it's who we're dealing with. We're dealing with this guy. We're dealing with Chef Shark here right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're dealing with Chef Shark. I mean, look at this. I don't even know what this is called. It tastes great. The sail fat, the sail fat on the sail cat is delicious. That's the best part of it. Um, I really can't tell whether Victor's seasoning is making the cat that tasty or if it's just the cat itself. But I go, you're, you're okay. If that's how you had to survive, sail cat. Oh well, boys. You guys heard it here. I mean, look, the plate speaks for itself. That's four catfish down, <laughs> four, four catfish down the hatch. I mean, you guys get skunked on a bad day of fishing, go and fry up some catfish. I mean, he's never had it before. He's never had it before. None of us actually have ever had it before. And I was telling them like, honestly, I like really firm textured fish. And this is what this is. You get more of that like, pork, chicken texture versus fish, I'd honestly would rather eat this than dolphin. Don't kill me in the comments. Mm. I just, I like a firm fish and for fried, this is the perfect thing to do. And by the way, this succotash is definitely gonna be used in future recipes. Mm. This was like one of my favorite sides I ever made. So uh, thank you guys for the kind words. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you, and I'll catch all you guys in the next one. You wanna come over and eat some of my succotash? <laughs> <laughs>